Okay, the Three Musketeers, the 2011 version. If you've never seen the Three Musketeers, <clears throat> you pretty much have. Excuse me, you have Athos, Aramis, and Porthos. If I butcher the names, I'm sorry, I don't speak French. And ironically, this is kind of toward the end of their career. And in this one, how they make it differently, how they make it different, <clears throat> is initially they break into one of Da Vinci's vaults in Venice and steal the plans for an airship. I know that has swords and airships. The person who helps steal it is Mila. I think it's Hojovic. Jovovich isn't the way it's pronounced, I guess, correct Wikipedia. <clears throat> As Lady De Winter, she slides through what ends up being a trapped hallway with a combination of both crossbows in the walls as well as spiked balls that get shot out. So she makes her way through it, gets the plans, they then escape, and she then kind of turns on the Three Musketeers to help Lord or Prince Buckingham, played by Orlando Bloom. The clothes that Orlando Bloom and the Prince of France wear are super ridiculous. I mean, the, the hair on Orlando Bloom is like big and poofy and he's got this super overly manicured beard and a mustache and the outfit that he wears when he shows up in his airship is ridiculously over the top. And then they show the, the well, I guess he'd be the King of France at the time. The, the King of France at this point, I think he's like a, like a 16 year old boy. And he is just dressed. The show him whether he's in like a green suit and it's got like a little cave or like a giant almost leprechaunish hat and really almost like bad 80s glam rock shoes just looks super over the top. Which kind of makes sense. This is a, a Paul W.S. Anderson, so it's pretty much it's an action film. With occasionally some really bizarre over the top outfits. So, of course, Three Musketeers are kind of like, well, you know, we've we failed in this mission. We kind of failed France. Since France thing will probably go to war. Well, we're going to be mercenaries for hire. We'll drink. And then, of course, is when D'Artagnan shows up. D'Artagnan, not actually part of the Three Musketeers, but is a very important part of the mythos, being that he is the, the younger person who initially runs afoul of all three of them. Doing the, I guess, I'm fighting you to death at noon, you did that one, you did that two. Because I'm an awesome swordsman, I'm going to kill all of you. Okay. So while you have those guys fighting, that's then when the Cardinal in France, who was kind of lobbying for power and trying to control all of France, sends his guard. His guard is almost like a standing army. Nice fight scenes between the Three Musketeers and the uh, Cardinal's army. You know, the nice most movie is it has really decent fight sequences. And the fact that they threw in nice swords play with the very standard Three Musketeers storyline. And then they throw in airships. Notice I say air ships. <sighs> yes, the Cardinal then hatches a plot with the help of Lady De Winter, who is playing both sides, to try to get uh, the young king to think that his queen has been consorting with Prince Buckingham. The Musketeers find out about this, decide that they're going to stop it, which then leads to an airship to airship battle. Yes, multiple airships. <clears throat> and of course the Three Musketeers do a pretty decent job when it comes to preventing what could have been an all-out war between England and France and all for one, one for all, and everyone's great and happy <clears throat> with the bizarre, somewhat pseudo steampunk elements every now and then. It's used lightly, but it's used enough to throw that it's actually in there. And then it ends with the potential of there being a sequel, showing that Prince Buckingham is less than thrilled with the way things have transpired, 
and is looking to attack France. All in all, you know, decent action film, which is what this is. Don't look at this to have anywhere near the uh, the majesty and the grandeur. The Three Musketeers had some like the Man of the Iron Mask with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, you know, this is a, a Paul W. S. Anderson film, so this is going to have lots of action, uh, a really good kind of kind of fast pacing to it, and all in all, it's it's a decent action film. It's a nice way to bring a new generation to be of people into the idea of the Three Musketeers, but at the same time, kind of lowering the bar just enough to make it essentially an action film with bits and pieces of plot that actually transition very smooth and very easily.